They are quiet observers who creep within meters of the enemy and can take out a target from nearly a mile away. Their actions can change the outcome of battles, even wars. They take lives to save lives. Silent, hidden, deadly. One shot, one kill. In modern warfare, there is a single soldier that relies on stealth, camouflage, and marksmanship. Within coalition armies, they are considered one of the most feared weapon systems, and often their most effective, the modern sniper. Their presence changed the face of the battlefield forever. No one was safe from their bullets no matter how far behind the front lines. Of particular importance was the psychological impact snipers could have on an advancing army, literally grinding it to a halt. Today, snipers are one of the most relied upon assets a battle commander can field, but it wasn't always that way. Snipers date back hundreds of years, even to the days of the American War of Independence. American militia marksmen targeted British officers with deadly accuracy. Their musket balls had a devastating effect on British battlefield leadership. The American Civil War, the deadliest war in American history. Over 600,000 soldiers die in battle. During the Civil War, snipers on both sides of the conflict took a deadly toll, once again proving their effectiveness. No one seems safe from these marksmen. World War I, the war of attrition and stalemate. It was in this horrific war that snipers truly proved their value. The Imperial German Army were first to use snipers. They had a devastating effect on Allied soldiers, killing anyone foolish enough to expose themselves. The British quickly formed their own sniper schools. They developed unique camouflage systems known as ghillie suits to help a sniper blend in with the terrain. Within months, the British had even the score. World War II. During the Second World War, snipers again proved their tactical value. In the Pacific, in Europe, and even in Russia, snipers played a decisive role on the battlefield. The Russians, in particular, used snipers with ruthless efficiency in famous battles such as Stalingrad. Russian female snipers made many German soldiers pay the ultimate price, but snipers were not well-liked, even by their own troops. With a reputation as ruthless loners who would kill their own mothers, they were shunned and misunderstood. Even worse, military leaders didn't understand how to tactically employ snipers. But that was all about to change. Vietnam. During the Vietnam War, U.S. snipers gained notoriety. Snipers helped keep the enemy away from critical installations, killed Viet Cong leaders, and helped protect American soldiers. Hated by the enemy more than any other, 
a bounty was put on their heads. But U.S. military leaders and soldiers loved them because of what they had proved in the jungles of Vietnam. The sniper had finally earned his place as one of the most respected and feared warriors on the battlefield. Today, snipers are an integral component of all coalition armies. In Afghanistan and Iraq, snipers are making a profound difference. Using covert tactics, they gather information about the enemy. With a single bullet, they can wreak havoc on attackers, stop suicide bombers from reaching their intended targets, saving lives by taking lives. They're force multipliers who've earned their place in top combat units. Good training. It's critical to success. It all begins at school. Sniper school. It's hard like while it's moving. Fort Benning, Georgia, home of the U.S. Army Sniper School. At this school, barely passing is not an option. Only the best of the best make the grade. Because in the field, mistakes cost lives. Fort Benning, Georgia one of the largest bases in the U.S. Army. Over 181,000 acres, 63 firing ranges, over 20,000 troops in the field every day. Basic Infantry School. U.S. Rangers. Airborne Training. armor training. This is truly the training ground of warriors. It's here at Fort Benning that the U.S. Army established their sniper school, considered by many to be the best in the world. Here, soldiers are taught the essentials of being a sniper. But snipers are far more than marksmen. Well, the sniper brings several things to a commander and to the battlefield. First of all, a well-trained sniper team is a great reconnaissance asset for the commander. They can uh, infiltrate into an area, they can stay in an area, and they provide uh, reconnaissance that our current ISR, intelligence surveillance reconnaissance platforms, your UAVs and, and other uh, such platforms can't because they don't have persistence. You can put a team in for 24, 48, 72 hours and let them observe a, a known or suspected uh, area of interest. The other thing that they bring to the battlefield is the ability to selectively take out known or suspected threats, sometimes at long distances. Uh, nothing instills more fear in the enemy than that see the, the guy he's talking to his head explode. Uh, it's pretty demoralizing, especially if you're the guy who, whose head explodes. One of the essential skills taught to snipers is stalking. It's a grueling class. Many don't make it to the end. A sniper has to be strongly motivated to succeed where others would quit. Today, camouflage and route choices are everything. Snipers have to be able to sneak right up to the enemy, unseen. In order to do this, they have to conceal their presence. This is known as vegging up. Yeah, you want to veg up a little bit here. Just conceal your movement on your way up there. But once you get up there, the veg usually changes. So you want to get into a good position, take off your top, and put a lot more veg up there before you get to your final firing position. The sniper students wear ghillie suits, a special suit designed for attaching vegetation to it. The idea is to break up the outline of your body, blend into your environment, and creep around unnoticed. 
This young sniper is learning the essentials of this critical field craft. What you do is, you jute up your ghillie suit, and then you put these tie downs here for your veg. Yeah, tie them off. You don't want to do too much here because the veg usually changes about 300 meters out. And at that point, you just look like something that doesn't belong there. And these guys that are spotting us, they've been doing this for, you know, 20 some odd years. They really know how to pick things like that out. Especially the two guys that are on glass right now. Old Vietnam guys. I can see anything out there. So, uh, you just hope not to get caught. All right, three hours. Stalk time starts now. The students silently head off into the forest. One by one, each focused on a mission. Deep in the woods sits the sniper's targets. Two men in a truck, but they're not sitting ducks. They know there are snipers out there. They carefully scan the forest, closely examining every detail. They're veterans of the Vietnam War and expert snipers. The student's goal is to creep up without being seen and take a shot at the instructors. They successfully do this by identifying a letter. Then they creep back to where they started, all undetected. It's one of the hardest events in sniper school. I'm pretty sure I got his attention. Can you use it? Instructors walk the forest. They help the veteran snipers in the truck bust the students. They watch for telltale clues, which give away the sniper's positions. There are many challenges for the sniper to consider. One is overhead movement. Freeze them. Freeze them. Continue to move. This time, the student is given a warning. Overhead move. All right, look back real quick. You won't be seen. You see that big tall tree, just, those two trees you just moved Roger. through? Roger. The thing was shaking big time. All right, that's exactly what they're looking for in the truck. They're looking for that overhead movement. That's a huge target indicator. The next time he is busted, he'll be forced to start his crawl all over again. Like in the real world, these snipers can't make movement mistakes. Good field craft techniques, all are important. The key is not getting caught. If they're using the improper movement techniques and moving too fast, then it's easy for the eye, the human eye, to quickly uh, zoom in on that and then just exploit it. Um, and that's where these observers, they're very, very highly trained uh, to do this exercise. That's why uh, it's, it's easy for them to spot it. As far as time limit right now, it's been an hour and 47 minutes, and some of the guys haven't even taken a shot. Um, they haven't, they're not using the veg, the natural veg around them. In my opinion, not really good right now because this is a third, fourth stop, and it's still not doing as good as it's supposed to be doing. Doing about face, one step forward, one more, inch forward. Forward, sniper. Oh my this right here? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh my god. That's his uh, natural badge, my bad, though. Uh, that's too high. I'm sorry, man. Just recaught, caught back here a little bit about 50, 60 yards. Uh, Go as you can. Yeah. All right. All right, five steps forward. I'm not gonna let this get this bullet off. Roger, gotcha, on the beer. This time, the students did so poorly, the entire group is nuked. It means everyone has to go back to the start line and begin their crawl again. But, uh, these guys are pretty good. They're really, really good. Repetition is the key to learning. It ingrains key lessons. Lessons that will save these snipers' lives on future operational deployments. All right, break it out. Well, the challenge for me was uh, getting as close as I could, uh, setting up to take a shot. 
without getting detected. Unfortunately for me, that didn't happen. <laughs> a sniper is able to stay focused to get that one well-aimed shot. The job is mentally and physically tough. You have to be above average in all ways. You have to make a lot of right decisions under intense pressure. The most dangerous threat for a sniper is another sniper. This is when the hunter becomes the hunted. The sniper rifle has changed very little since World War II. Currently, the most popular weapon is the venerable M24. It's a total firing system. It sets standards for accuracy, dependability, and durability. The M24 was designed by the United States military and has been sold to armies around the world. M24 Sniper Weapon System. Bolt Action, five round magazine. Cartridge, NATO 7.62 millimeters. Muzzle velocity, 2,580 feet per second. Weight, 12.3 pounds. Sights, loopholed, Mark 10 by 40 millimeter scope. Effective range, over 800 meters. It's a 7.62 NATO caliber. Uh, it's got a range of 800 meters, and that's shooter dependent, and uh, good shooters can take it out to 1,000 meters. 1,000 meters away from the target, the length of about 10 football fields, an extremely impressive standard, but some have gone even further. Afghanistan, 2002, Operation Anaconda. A Canadian sniper makes the longest confirmed sniper kill in combat history. 2,430 meters. That's over 26 football fields. The sniper used a long-range weapon system for the shot. The Barrett M107 sniper rifle. Weight, 30.9 pounds. Cartridge, 50 caliber. Action, recoil-operated semi-automatic. 10-round detachable magazine. The 50 caliber sniper round was principally designed for destroying and disabling military hardware. The primary difference between a 50 caliber round and a 7.62 is obviously size. Our 7.62 round is a 175 grain weight, whereas this is 660 grain weights, armor piercing incendiary. So what you're seeing on the target is a, is a flash of the chemicals burning off where it's burning through the steel. Okay, this, it's used to penetrate light-skinned vehicles. With an armor-piercing incendiary round, there's not a whole lot that we can't get a hold of. Today, sniper students are learning how to quickly and accurately fire the Barrett 50 caliber. Working with their spotter, each student gets only two chances to hit the target. If their score is too low, it will result in an automatic failure. Six, five, Urban warfare, the most dangerous type of combat. The reality of modern conflicts is urban warfare, even for snipers. Uh, urban battlefields, what we have today in Iraq, uh, it's mostly used, uh, our snipers will set up in blown out buildings, abandoned buildings and stuff like that. It's any kind of structure that they can get some cover in and they'll stay there for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours or longer and uh, sit there and observe. Urban warfare is also home to intense sniper on sniper battles the ultimate sniper test. One mistake would probably be your last, which is why they spend a lot of time training in urban operations. Tactics, concealment, marksmanship, 
booby traps, field craft techniques that could save their lives. Uh, dangerous for a sniper, the most dangerous would be another sniper, an enemy sniper. Counter sniping is so dangerous to another sniper because anytime you're going up against a trained individual, you're not sure what his capabilities are, what, what weapon system he has, how long he's been trained, how long he's been actually active. There's a lot of factors that go into counter sniper, and the more you can learn about the subject, the better off you're going to be. The last thing a sniper actually wants to do is engage an enemy sniper one on one. There should be alternate means or any kind of other measure we can use against them to take out that sniper before we actually send one of our own out to find him and kill him. The lessons these students are learning at sniper school will help keep them alive. Snipers, highly trained, highly specialized, highly disciplined. Today, snipers are one of the most respected and valued assets in battle. They are a special breed, different from other soldiers. We've got great soldiers across the Army, and from that we select the very best. Uh, those that are driven, those are, that are intelligent, because a sniper operates independently. He has got to be able to go out and make some very mature, very reasoned decisions because a sniper's job doesn't stop when he pulls that trigger. That's only half the job. You know, getting into position and taking that high precision shot is only half the mission. You're no good to us unless you can exfiltrate and get back home safely. You gotta be mentally prepared is probably the biggest one. It's, you know, the physical aspect, we can work on that, um, but it's the mental, being mentally prepared to conduct military operations, to be able to look through the optics at your enemy and pull the trigger. Coalition snipers, silent, covert, deadly. One shot, one kill.